What's going on guys? Tropical Fish Guy here. Today I'm going to show you a really cool and interesting fish. The Serpe Tetra, as you could probably tell by the name of the title. It's a really cool looking fish. Deep red. It's got that diamond uh, black stripe down the, the middle of its body right behind the gills. Let's take a look. So the Serpe Tetra, check him out. Let's get a zoom. The color markings are very interesting on this fish. It's got the dark ruby red body with that kind of diamond looking black stripe going down from the top to the bottom, kind of right in the middle behind its gills. Got that top black fin. The bottom fin has that red and black pattern there with the red and, and black tail, with the red tail. Gets a little bit of black, but that little splash of red on the top and, and black on the, in the back of it. Really cool fish, really cool. The intense colors of this fish is, makes this a very popular fish in the hobby. You'll probably see these at any kind of fish store you go to, whether it's a mom and pop shop or a big box store, or whatever, Petco, PetSmart, they all have these. Very cool fish. Their tank mates, they can live with a variety of different tank mates. They prefer to be in schools, so definitely get probably at least I've got four in here, but I need more. But uh, I would suggest from this experience, I would suggest probably at least six so they can establish a pecking order and they don't bother any of the other fish in the tank. They can be a little bit nippy, so I would not put them in with like angelfish or betta fish or anything like that. But fish that you can put them in with, I've got them in with some glow light tetras, some neon tetras, some white cloud minnows. They are a mid-dwelling swimmer, so they do need a lot of room in, in, in the fish tank for them to swim. Uh, not totally packed with plants or anything, but definitely they prefer live plants. They just need room to swim. And like I said, they are middle dwellers. They do swim back and forth in the middle level of the tank. So some other tank mates that would be good with them would be like barbs, danios, and other tetras stuff at the bottom would be like Corydoras catfish like I've got here you can see Corydoras I've got a really cool peacock gudge in there I've got some black fin tetras I've got some glow light tetras I even have some cherry shrimp in here now maybe you don't do the cherry shrimp but I do have a few cherry shrimp in there you'll see him in there and even smaller cherry shrimp right you can see that dude back there and I've got some for the cleaner shrimp they don't mess with also the Amano shrimp the barbs don't mess with at all and even I tested out a male guppy here and they just leave him alone as if he wasn't even there so and I've even got a little smaller guppy in here so I would say something that doesn't have too much flowing fins or anything like that but like these black skirts, they've got some good flowing fins, but they have not been harassed at all. So the key, I think, is to have a school of the serpe. So get you six or ten, or however many you would, would want to get. There's another cherry shrimp right there that they don't bother. But, you know, sometimes it depends on the attitude of the fish. So I just saw this dude. He was chasing around the, the smaller guppy. But, I mean, they do that. It was, it's uh, just natural to chase some someone sometimes but it's what the tetras do sometimes but not too often which is which is okay as long as you notice there's no fin nippage or anything like that they're great schooling fish like i said really nice they do have a pecking order so i would once again i know i keep saying it but once again i would suggest uh getting a school of six or more i would suggest a at least a 20 gallon tank maybe this is a 20 long that you see here. Uh, lots of plants, live plants, so they don't require live plants, but they do come from the Amazon uh, around Brazil or Paraguay, something like that. What they eat, uh, they are omnivores and they're easy to feed. They eat insects and worms in nature, but will accept just about any type of food that you provide in the aquarium. So like I said, they do eat a wide variety of foods that you can give them. 
feed them anywhere from the new life spectrum. They love blood worms. Those are freeze-dried blood worms. The fluval food, they love omega-1s. And you know, I've got all these, they, oh, they love the bug bites here because like I said, naturally they eat bugs and stuff, insects, which this stuff is. And I, I'll leave all these links in the description below so you can check those out for yourself. But like us, they do like a variety of food. You know, you don't want to eat the same food all the time. So I spoiled the fish. Of course, you don't have to buy all these, right? Just get you uh, one or two different kinds of foods maybe to start and see how they like it and then just move on. Next time you buy food, get something different. And then you'll end up like with a whole bunch like I do. But making sure that, you know, you feed them according to the shelf life of the food, right? Because you don't want to feed them stale food, obviously. You don't want to eat stale food, they don't either. They are very easy to keep, and, and they do and they do live in a wide variety of water conditions. They prefer soft water with pH between uh, 5, anywhere from 5 all the way up to 7, 8. My tank has a pH around 7, 5, 7, 8, something like that. And they are doing just wonderful. So they do have, they are very easy to care for. They are egg layers. Can't tell the the males and females. You know, they say that the male, the females are rounder and more more plump and less color coloration. But really, I can't tell the difference. They prefer soft water, but they can live in a fairly wide range from five to twenty five degrees of, of hardness. Uh, the temperature they can live in a pretty good temperature range, anywhere from seventy two degrees to you know about 80 degrees but uh, I would go you know somewhere in between maybe I, I keep my house at around 74 or 75 76 degrees and they're just doing just fine so there you have it let's let's feed them something let's see here So you can see that they do eat very well. They go to the top to grab the flake food. They stay in the middle to grab the middle sinking food. They, and oh yeah, that one just went up. So you'll see them. Yeah, all these tetras love this food. So what I'm feeding now is the uh, New Life Spectrum. And I'll leave all these links. They, they love just about anything that you feed them. So, um, so definitely, I don't feed them too much because they'll, there you go, you saw that? Yeah, yeah, they heartily eat, that's for sure. They've got no problem eating. So there you have it guys, the Serpe Tetra, beautiful fish, good for a community aquarium like you see here. Definitely well worth checking into and just wanted to share with you guys one of my favorite schooling tetras so leave me a comment give me a like uh, tell me what your favorite schooling tetra is in the comment below or what's your favorite tetra i mean they pretty much all school right leave a comment below and uh, give me a like subscribe to the channel if you like these kind of videos and I, as always i don't thank you guys enough thank you so much for watching and happy fish keeping peace out